Hi, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to our webinar. This is the second part of our three series of the CA 2030. Um, let's go to the next slide while we're waiting for some folks to come in. We'll go over some of the logistics and housekeeping for today's meeting. Closed captioning and ASL interpreting services are available. You can access that by clicking the icons at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Participants are all muted during presentations. You may use your raise hand icon during our Q&A portion to request your line to be unmuted, or you can also join us in the Q&A. You can submit your questions and comments using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar as well. Today's webinar is also being recorded. Both the presentation and recording will be archived. You can visit CDA's YouTube channel to view it. Um, or also come to our webpage and there will be a link there as well under our highlights. So again, um, welcome everyone that has joined our presentation. Next slide, please. Um, I will now turn it over to our director, Susan DeMorris. Thank you, Connie, and good morning uh, to the diehards who are joining in the middle of July at night in the morning on a Monday. Um, you share... Um, our belief that this is very important work and we appreciate you joining us today to, to hear what's what's happening in California's AAA Area Agency on Aging Network. Uh, so thank you to our partners, Collaborative Consulting for preparing this work. I'm really excited uh, for them to share it with all of us today and we can go ahead and move to the next slide. And many of you were part of this, uh, our first installment, and this is not new, new work to, to most of you, uh, but we did want to share with you an updated slide that shows what's happening to California's population. It's uh, familiar to all of us by now that by the year 2030, one in four Californians will be age 60 or older. And this slide shows what's happening with our 65 plus population. Right there in the middle, um, we've been talking about this for years, but you can see in 2023, there on the bottom, the marker is 2025, is where the 65 plus population really starts to take off. Um, next slide. And at the same time, our 18 to 64 and our zero, under 18 populations are both in a decline. Next slide. Our AAA network serves all 58 counties in every part of California. We wanted to share with you some of the regional um, demographics that are happening. And, and this takes us out through 2060, which you might think, gosh, you know, do we really need to be looking that far out? But uh, next year we celebrate 50 years as the Department of Aging. So uh, 2060, you know, we're really looking at, at the next 50 year horizon for older adults, people with disabilities and family caregivers in our state. And you can see here um, the Inland Empire at the top of the chart, a 682% change in the population 65 and older. And even the lowest um, number on this chart the Northern and Sierra counties um, are expected to see a 189% change. Very dramatic growth. Next slide. So we'll take you back quickly through the steps that brought us here today. Um, as you know, Governor Newsom in June of 2019 issued an executive order calling on our state to produce a master plan for aging. And in that executive order, uh, there was the first deliverable that the governor called for was a long-term services and support subcommittee that um, was asked to produce a report even before the master plan for aging um, was finalized. And in that report, stakeholders identified five objectives, a system that all Californians can easily navigate. So navigation is key. That is the first step. Um, access to LTSS in every community. So once you're once you're in the system and you're you're finding your way, what's available to you and how do you access it? And then once you identify what you need, 
what if you can't afford it um, or you're not eligible for it? So looking at the affordability of choices and then all of the services that support individuals at home and in the community require a highly valued, high quality workforce. And we know we're in the midst of a workforce crisis now that's projected to worsen. And then last, this is really what we're talking about today, streamlined state and local administrative structures. All of the stakeholder input, um, starting with the LTSS subcommittee, work really emphasized um, what a maze this is for older adults, people with disabilities and family caregivers to navigate, um, to know what's local, what's state, what's federal, how do they work together? And it's really incumbent on us to make that system work um, seamlessly um, for everyone, all, all users. Next slide. Following the LTSS subcommittee report, the governor released the official master plan for aging with five bold goals, 23 strategies, and in the first iteration, 132 initiatives. Among those initial initiatives, um, initiative number 101 called on the Health and Human Services Agency to revisit local leadership structures specific to the area agencies on aging. So this is a continuation of that work. Next slide. Many of you also participated in the hubs and spokes work that the Department of Aging led in 2022-2021, and you provided uh, feedback. You were panelists, presenters. You wrote comments. Thank you for that. Our partner, uh, CSU Sacramento, Sac State, reported out to stakeholders um, on all of the findings of that hubs and spokes work, and that is informing us today as well. Next slide. So after we heard from Sac State about the, the, the work of hubs and spokes, as well as the LTSS subcommittee report and the governor's master plan for aging, we were thrilled that we um, identified resources that allowed us to work with collaborative consulting, the team you'll meet today if you haven't yet met them, um, to enter into a one-year contract that started last uh, December, November, December of last year, um, and will take us through uh, this December. And we asked Collaborative Consulting to design a quantitative and qualitative method to help us assess programs and services, funding sources and capacities, key performance measures, governance structure, geography and demographics, and branding communications and outreach. These were the key themes that emerged in the LTSS subcommittee report, in the master plan for aging, and in the hubs and spokes stakeholder work. Um, and that's what we're talking to you about today. And it's specific to the area agencies on aging, our AAA network. Next slide. We want to thank uh, all of our steering committee members. By design, the steering committee is made up of the key leaders of the organizations that represent AAAs in our state, the California Association of Area Agencies on Aging, known as C4A, the California Commission on Aging, known as CCOA, the Cal California Foundation of Independent Living Centers, CFILC, the California State Association of Counties, CSAC, and the County Welfare Directors Association, CWDA. We're just so grateful to all of the members of the steering committee who've given um, their time, their expertise, their thoughts and ideas uh, to this effort. Thank you all. Next slide. All right, so we're now in year three of our master plan for aging. Uh, this is a 10 year blueprint for our state that takes us through the year 2030. And in the most recent round of initiatives um, under goal three, strategy F, there is a new initiative and this is what we're laser focused on today, um, initiative 74. And that is the focus of this California 2030 initiative and our conversation today. Next slide. Meanwhile, our federal partner, the Federal Administration on Community Living, ACL, 
released a notice of proposed rulemaking last month asking for public input for the first time since 1988 on the Older Americans Act. We know that the federal government is also looking at how AAAs are structured, governed, and performing across the country. And um, we're just delighted that we're in sync with ACL and that we're doing um, this work um, parallel to ACL and this will inform our public comments that we're submitting next month to ACL. Next slide. And you saw our stellar steering committee, all representing um, agencies and organizations that are, are very influential in our AAA network. But for CDA and the Health and Human Services Agency, uh, it is critically important that this work be person-centered and the first step in our design was to um, research and secure a contract with, um, for the first time ever, uh, the CASOA, the Community Assessment Survey for Older Adults. It is now underway. This is a survey that is going directly to households in all 58 counties in multiple languages, and it's also available online. So this is how we will um, elicit feedback, direct feedback, feedback and input from older adults in every county in the state. Next slide. All right, so that's uh, a brief background on what's what led to today. And if she's joined us, um, I'd like to introduce all of you to one of our steering committee members, Victoria Jump, who is, is your title still director, Victoria, or has it been? Um, it's now Deputy Director, Aging um, and Disability Services, AAA Director. Excellent. Victoria's um, been leading a major transfer transformation in Ventura County, and um, I suspected you had a, a bigger title given um, the size and scope of your um, department within the agency. So, Victoria, thank you for joining us, and please share your thoughts on the California 2030 process. Thank you, um, Susan. And I would just on behalf of the area agencies on aging and as a member of the California 2030 Steering Committee, I'm ex really excited but also thankful for the project and the process that we went through. To me, this stakeholder process represents the most comprehensive examination of the AAA network and really nobody was left behind. As AAA directors, we were all interviewed and we were also given the opportunity for staff at multiple levels within our organization to be interviewed. As a network, you know, to my knowledge, for the last 20 plus years, we've never really been asked what we want as AAAs, where we see our network in the future, how we can better serve the population that we serve, and really what we need to get there. California 2030 is going to be transformative for us and also for the people that we serve, which you showed earlier, we have some big numbers coming at us and that we have to be prepared to serve them. I'm also excited that the data that's going to be collected will result in concrete actions that will prepare us for the future. So thank you, CDA. The AAA Network looks forward to partnering with you as we make the 2030 vision a reality. Thank you so much, Victoria, and thanks for all the hours you're logging, and we're not done yet, so you're, you've got more hours ahead of you on this California 2030 initiative. Thank you very much. And now I believe I'm turning it over to Lori Peterson and the team at Collaborative Consulting. Lori, welcome. Thank you, Susan, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining, uh, like Susan said, early on a Monday morning. Um, so the, the game plan uh, for today is that we're going to give um, a, a quick overview of the California 2030 project. You've already heard a little bit about it from Susan and Victoria. Um, we're going to highlight the interview themes that from the uh, AAAs, AAA interviews that we conducted over the spring and early summer. And then we're going to provide an opportunity to um, open it up to all of you for questions, comments about the interview themes that you're gonna hear in just a moment, and also the California 2030 project. 
Um, but before we get started, a, a few things to consider. So you're going to hear us talk a lot about the California Aging Network. You'll probably hear us say uh, Future Ready California Aging Network multiple times within the next 45 minutes. Uh, when we're talking about the California Aging Network in the context of this project, we're talking about the 33 area agencies on aging, so the 33 AAAs and CDA. So that, that's a bit of a just a definition and terminology that we're using in this project. Um, what we're offering today is one of several pieces of research, um, which I will spotlight in just a moment, or I'll talk a little bit more about in just a moment. And it's a glimpse into the interview themes from all 33 AAAs. Um, these are ideas, their perspectives from the people that work in the local agencies. They're not recommendations yet, and they're not commitments yet. So that's, that's where we are within the project. So with those few disclaimers, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so next slide, Allison, there we go. So the, the California 2030, the, the purpose of the project is to imagine and design a future-ready California aging network that can serve a larger, older, and more diverse population of Californians. Um, also navigate through probably what's going to look like more complexity in the near future, in the near future and long-term future. To achieve the project's purpose, we, we designed a year-long uh, project with 10 phases of work, which really started with forming the steering committee, as Susan mentioned and highlighted. Um, we have been very grateful for the guidance that the steering committee members have given us, lots of points of view, uh, lots of expertise, and uh, lots of wisdom that they're bringing to the project. The project approach also supports a really robust uh, research and discovery phase, which you're going to hear me point out in the next slide in a moment. Um, and then all of this work leads to kind of these last few phases where we're going to be looking at different possibilities and different scenarios that would need to be in place to materialize a future ready California aging network. And then it ends with the kind of the final deliverable being actionable recommendations in the six core operation, operational and strategic focus areas that Susan mentioned earlier. Next slide. So like I said, the project supports a really robust um, discovery, research and discovery phase. Um, and here you can see, we started with stakeholder perspectives. We did do a webinar on um, June 23rd that's accessible on the CDA website. And, and these stakeholders were thought leaders, um, researchers, community-based organization, other state leaders, um, associations, multiple stakeholder perspectives. I think we had around 80, 80 voices in that piece of work. The next is the AAA stakeholder perspective, which is the focus of today's webinar. Um, all 33, like Victoria mentioned, were interviewed. And I, I should mention that um, these were multi-hour interviews. And um, many of them included us going on site and talking to the leader and the team members within the AAAs. We're also looking at some data, um, CDA data, AAA data. That, that's coming into a, a network uh, profile, which is really the, the current state of the network, more from that quantitative perspective. We're doing promising practices, which is looking at what are other states doing? Um, what can we learn from other states? What might be replicable as we think about what, what we're going to do in this project in California? And then we're looking at trends and projections. And as Susan mentioned, the older adult needs assessment. So that, that is all the research. Again, focus today is on the area agency on aging stakeholder perspectives. Now, next slide, Allison. And here's just a glimpse of the stakeholder depth, which I've already referenced multiple times, but when you see it on the slide, 162 stakeholder voices, 33 AAA directors, and 129 staff members. It, it's a decent representation of a AAA perspective for sure. Next slide. So here's what we wanted to 
here's what we wanted to learn from the AAAs. And here, here's a sampling of the questions that we asked. So we wanted to hear uh, their perspective on what's it gonna be like in 10 years? Um, what will be some of the challenges and opportunities for the network, but also for the people that the network serve? Uh, what trends do the aging network need to be paying attention to? So we wanted to, to talk a little bit about what, what's on the horizon. We also wanted to hear their perspective on what's possible. What would a future ready California aging network look like? What changes would need to be in place? Um, how would those changes occur? Who would need to change? What programs and services and policies would be activated in that kind of future ideal state? We got lots of ideas on that, by the way, um, which you're gonna hear in a moment from Aaron. And then we wanted to hear from the AAA's priority, prioritizing. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas, but what would the priorities need to look like? What would Partner, what partnerships and alliances would need to be in place and how would we measure um, a successful future ready California aging network. Um, and then we wanted to hear about how they see themselves currently. So we could get a sense of the gap between how they view themselves and the network currently um, and what's possible. And we're gonna hear some about the current state perspective in a minute from Aaron as well. So that's what we, we asked of stakeholders. And then we took all of that data. And as you can imagine, it was a lot of interview data, analyzed, synthesized, and came up with kind of, I'd say four primary overarching trend categories, uh, or I should say uh, theme categories, trends, current and emerging, current state, the California Aging Network today, um, traits, of a future ready California aging network and then action. What are some ideas around action to achieving a future ready California aging network? So today we are only gonna be able to give you a glimpse of the interview themes. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the trends, current and emerging, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Erin and she's gonna talk a little bit about how the network sees themselves, current state, um, ideal traits that they pointed out, and then also um, some of those ideas for action. I would highly recommend if any of this piques your interest, the full report will be available on the CDA website. If it's not already there, it will definitely be available after this webinar. And so if any of this, uh, you'd like to dive into it a little bit more in depth, the report is available. So with that, uh, we asked the AAAs what they thought would be the most pressing trends now and into the future. Um, and although these trends are reported as solo trends, um, when thinking about the convergence of trends such as, you know, the planet is reaching the so-called irreversible tipping point, um, older adults are becoming homeless um, at higher rates than any other age group in California. The state will be experiencing a shortage in caregivers. I think it's projected around 3.2 million in the next decade. And technology is outpacing humans' ability to process it. It's really essential to think about how the interconnectivity of these trends could significantly impact the aging network and the people it serves. So even though we are looking at these in kind of a solo, you know, each trend, I really wanna encourage folks to think about um, what does the, what's the potential impact of the interconnectivity of multiple trends sweeping through the state of California within the next decade. So with that, um, a, few, a few bullet points here from the AAA. So there are more older Californians and they're living longer. Um, that, that is pretty clear. And Susan gave some great stats on that. The AAAs were talking about, hey, what does that mean for the, de the, the demand of service? Um, and, will, and how will we fill that demand? Second trend they talked about, um, racial, ethnic, and cultural diversity of older Californians is expanding. 
And they reflected on what does that mean for the way they design and deliver their services or what will that mean for the way they design and deliver their services in the future? The housing shortage is already a crisis and could get worse. Um, we heard a lot about this and I, I really think this quote sums it up. Housing is the number one type of call we take. We take 70 plus calls a day on, 70 plus calls a day on this. It's all about affordable housing, which is getting harder and harder to find. Gratefully, um, some AAAs that we talked to are already um, focusing in, in this area. They're putting um, efforts in place to um, increase advocacy. They're looking at new programs and services as well. Paid and unpaid caregiving shortages will become more acute. And AAAs talked a little bit about uh, family member, or, uh, older adults needing to tap into family members more often because there's not enough caregiver work, paid caregiver workforce. The challenge with that is a lot of uh, family members are not in the state for a variety of reasons. And so this is putting some pressure on AAAs to think about who to serve, where to put their focus. Um, and then also how to engage uh, family caregivers out of the state and maybe even out of the country. And they think they'll see a lot more of that in the future. Service demand will grow, workforce challenges will deepen. Interviewees talked a lot about the special specialization that's gonna be needed for complex care and how we already have a shortage of specialists. Which, which goes hand in hand with the next trend, more adults will have mental and behavioral health challenges. And so caregivers are gonna need to specialize the way they deliver care and services. And a lot of folks especially mentioned uh, dementia related services. More older adults will face financial vulnerability. Climate change will impact older Californians and they AAA interviewees talked quite a bit about uh, what that meant for them as they're planning around emergency preparedness. Um, and then finally, advanced technologies offer a multitude of threats and opportunities for consumers. And interviewees really acknowledge that the AAAs will need to become more tech relevant in the way they manage their operations, in the way they engage the next generations of consumers. And um, a variety of other things around technology came up in the interviews. Um, with that, next slide, please, Allison. I am going to um, not harp on this slide. I'll give folks a moment to take it in. And I'm going to turn it over to Erin at this point. And like I said, she's going to talk a little bit about how the AAA see themselves currently, ideal traits, and then action, ideas for action, and then we'll open it up for questions. So with that, Erin, all yours. Great, thank you, Lori. Thank you everyone again for joining this morning. I will, uh, as Lori mentioned, I'll start with the current state and uh, it's probably no surprise too, I'll just make uh, the statement now that there's certainly a lot of connection between the current state as well as the ideas for action that we'll hear and I'll talk through in a moment. But um, not to get too far ahead of myself, again, let me highlight some of the themes that we heard um, from the current state of the California Aging Network. And we had nine themes that, that really emerged here. Uh, so the first, a positive one, is that the California Aging Network has valuable strengths and assets to leverage. What we heard uh, resoundingly from all of the triple A's is that they're driven by their mission. They have passionate staff that are committed to those that they serve. They have a deep connection and understanding of their communities, some with really extensive collaborations and partnerships within their community. And then another asset uh, noted by many is the strengthening bond that's forming between the, chair, the, the AAAs, CDA, and the state association C4A, uh, which really resulted in a lot of optimism that we heard through the, the uh, interviews about the future of the network. The next thing that emerged about the current state is that the California Aging Network is receiving greater attention outside of the network. First, uh, as we uh, talked about earlier in the webinar, is the California Master Plan for Aging, or the MPA, which has brought new attention and resources statewide for aging services and support. There was also the COVID pandemic, which was mentioned often, uh, it certainly brought about its challenges, of course, but the conditions also led to greater flexibility for AAAs. Uh, they were able to take on new and expanded roles in their community, um, and that prevent, prevent, uh, presented some opportunities. 
AAA has also mentioned the new funding opportunities that are emerging through Medicaid policies, where common services often provided by AAAs can be eligible for payment, which is leading to new contracting opportunities. But that leads to the next theme that emerged, which is that funding is a constant concern. There aren't enough local resources and infrastructure to care for all the basic needs for older Californians, and this will only be exacerbated, as we saw, by the continued population growth and longer life expectancy. This was especially a concern that we heard in rural areas where funding challenges were cited for staffing challenges, uh, which can lead to limited pre presence and impacts for their communities. Beyond the funding itself, AAAs recognized that requirements surrounding funding are also a burden, with a lot of reporting and fiscal requirements that are felt to take away from the time spent serving the community. Though uh, mission-driven and committed to their communities, another theme that emerged is that many AAAs feel they are still hidden in their communities. They feel they are not often the first point of contact for older adults and are often not found or known as a resource in their community until a person is in crisis um, and needing the support at that time. There isn't a widely recognized brand. Uh, triple names are not consistent and can vary significantly. And many don't have the resources dedicated to effective marketing, they feel. Uh, plus, many also noted this, uh, this balance they struggle with, where there are concerns as they improve their visibility, improve their outreach, will they have enough resources to care for that demand? The next thing that we, we uh, heard was the, about policies and practices. Um, they felt there are opportunities to make policies and practices within the AAAs more efficient and more effective with some today, possibly even hindering their performance. Uh, they noted that there are administra administrative tasks and requirements that are burdensome that take up additional resources and capacities. And then the next thing we heard uh, pretty significantly is that there is significant variation across the California Aging Network. The network over all the years hasn't been necessarily built from deliberate planning and a collective vision. Instead, the drivers of change have been shifts in economies, policies, politics, and as a result, it has led to the significant variation that, that is seen throughout the network at the local level. Services are inconsistent throughout the state. Um, the scope of the services can vary, um, and the quality of the services can vary greatly from AAA to AAA. And geography and demographics, uh, more specifically, were uh, one of the key drivers of that variation. And, uh, you know, of course, we heard from various perspectives here, those in rural communities, they struggle most with limited resources, less vendors to work with, less staff, limited capacities and capabilities, and more challenges in even reaching and, and serving their consumers. Those in suburban communities most often recognize challenges primarily with increased cost of living, uh, resulting in limited financial liquidity for the consumers they serve and consequently greater service needs. Those in urban AAAs face higher concentrations of demands, wait lists, and higher cost of living paired with significant housing shortages. And then regardless of geography, all AAAs face challenges in serving migrant and underserved communities. They noted lack of resources and competencies to remove cultural and language barriers to meet the consumer needs. And then further contributing to variation across the network, AAAs have different organizing and governance models, which also resulted in differences that we heard. So each AAA structure is seen as having both advantages and disadvantages. And um, certainly heard a lot here, but just to give a couple highlights. Uh, so nonprofit AAAs, for instance, benefit feel they benefit from more adaptability and less internal policies and restrictions. Nonprofit joint power agreements or JPAs are similar. They felt they see more flexibility, more opportunity for fundraising. Government JPAs, however, um, have stronger collaborative ties in the county and can share data with government partners more easily. And then government AAAs have a beneficial safety net with their integration into the local government and often have greater coordination and access to other resources. And lastly, the last theme that emerged uh, and also related uh, to variation is that AAAs operating in multi-county PSAs also experience unique challenges and opportunities. Uh, those that are multi-county AAAs are, are really uniquely positioned because they must balance the local county to the regional. They want to consider and address the local needs and priorities of each county and community individually, but also want to try to find and maintain standards and processes across the entire region that they serve. And figuring out funding um, in, in particular was unique for multi-county AAAs. 
Um, and, and each seems to take a different approach to how they distribute funding and resources. Some choose to follow the, the interstate funding formula that's used at the state level. Others choose to take a more flexible approach to try and allocate resources less stringently based on each county and community's needs. So those are the key themes that emerged from the AAA's perspectives, again, of the current state. Uh, as you can see, there are strengths to leverage and build upon. There are opportunities for improvement and focus. And again, this is going to be reflected as we transition to ideas that the AAA's had for achieving a successful, future-ready California aging network. So as we transition to that part, uh, I'll, I'll first start by uh, summarizing that future vision. Uh, and I'll share the ideal traits or descriptors that emerged of what a future-ready California aging network would look like or would be. Um, and then I'll go through again some ideas and actions that the AAAs had uh, related to each of these traits. So just to, to take a moment here and read these out loud, the traits that we heard that came through the interviews, be visible and accessible, be collaborative and integrated, be efficient and streamlined, be equitable and sustainable, be consistent and flexible, be responsive and proactive, be age-friendly. All right, so now I'll, I'll explain, I'll give a little more descriptor for each of those and then share some of the, the actions or the ideas that we heard from the AAAs for each. So first, to be visible and accessible. A network that, that reaches and represents all Californias all Californians uh, easily found and recognizable before a person is in crisis. And again, some of the ideas that we heard from the AAAs included, uh, first a seamless entry point for the state, having consistent communications, branding and marketing um, that's considerate of different cultures, languages and abilities. And then a few additional actions that we heard to foster this, uh, first, to fund and support local outreach efforts. Uh, and what was great is that we heard some current examples as we uh, go through these ideas and actions of what they want to see more of. And one example, for instance, here was that uh, AAAs felt it's been very valuable to have um, communication toolkits that come from CDA that can be used and leveraged at the local level. Um, and so to see more of efforts like that, um, that allow for uh, more efficiency and more collaboration across the state. And then also many mentioned having new funding streams for dedicated staff or liaisons that can focus on informing and training community partners. Establishing a universally recognized brand was another idea, possibly renaming the network to reflect services better and minimize confusion, having consistent logos, an easily remembered phone number, and a central uh, resource directory. And then also to develop statewide campaigns. So having state-led effort, state efforts to provide branding, materials, and guidelines, again, um, enhancing program visibility at the state level. And then for the next trait, so be collaborative and integrated, so having a well-connected network, both within the network and with external partners, reducing barriers, strengthening ties with key allies and stakeholders at every level, local, regional, state, national, all the way. So the first idea is that within, within the network. So strengthening ties within the California Aging Network. Uh, many had ideas for establishing more defined channels for collaboration and interaction amongst the AAAs, uh, such as a digital forum, having a resource exchange or a platform for sharing or having a library of, of new ideas, promising practices, best practices, uh, case studies, and, and other uh, ways of sharing information. Some had the idea for de developing models for shared resources and systems. Uh, so for a couple examples, having um, shared office staff or infrastructure to build some efficiencies uh, for uh, particularly uh, for rural areas in the state or uh, possibly having joint contracting with vendors um, with the, the belief that that would provide potential benefits and having lower unit costs, greater consistency. Uh, and again, another example that, that came up here was uh, the statewide needs assessment um, that was mentioned earlier that's underway. Um, there was a lot of excitement about this um, and the belief that this could be a practice ongoing that would allow for um, the same uh, shared resources and systems. The next idea was around building, ex building and expanding local and state level partnerships. Uh, AAA saw that it would be ideal that there be greater state level Integration and collaboration across agencies and departments, um, integrating systems for whole person care, uh, or uh, many called, you know, brought up the no wrong door philosophy. 
And then many saw that there would be an opportunity then at the, after the state level to replicate that at the local level um, and saw that uh, achieving greater public awareness, stronger referral networks, and the ability to see service gaps and, and, and have a greater presence overall. And then lastly, uh, what came out as a, an action item or an idea here was to continue to improve the CDA and AAA relations. Again, as I mentioned in the current state, um, there's a lot of uh, positivity around this, uh, a lot of hopefulness, um, and that extended here as well um, of the potential relations uh, um, in the future based on the current efforts to provide um, additional support um, and tr uh, transparency between the AAAs and CDA. For the next trait, so be efficient and streamlined. So having a network that's continuously looking for ways to improve the use of resources and the consumer experience, uh, that could be process improvement, technological advances, advancements and others. And a few ideas that we heard here, uh, one was uh, AAAs in particular had ideas for simplifying the contract process. Um, some, some specific ideas were reducing the number of contracts through multi-year contracting, um, having timelier release and completion of contracts, such as um, something as specific as adopting digital signatures as a potential approach. Uh, many thought that leveraging technology to enhance service delivery and reach was an opportunity, uh, for instance, developing statewide virtual programs to expand access to services, um, at the same time combating some of the challenges felt across the network around social isolation or um, being able to remotely monitor their consumers. And then uh, one other idea was around data collection. So improving collection, um, improving data sharing, um, and just approving the way that data is used and analyzed to better manage and deliver services. Uh, so many felt that there was an opportunity to adopt or create a new data system statewide that would completely redefine how the network collects and uses data, uh, allowing for, uh, most importantly, the capture of data into a single system. And uh, they, they took this further and, and expanded on that. It would include new measures to collect, including outcomes measures, not just output. Um, having standardized directions on how to collect data so that it's uh, uniformly collected across the state. Uh, and then uh, on the back end, having tools and processes available to effectively use the data. Saw so this as an opportunity to um, share feedback to local AAAs, um, but also to use it outside of the network and potentially use it to demonstrate the value of the network. And then for the fourth trait, be consistent and flexible. So a network that has a, a standard level of access and quality across AAA programs and services, but also flexibility and planning and design to meet the community specific needs. Uh, and to do that, to say that more specifically, uh, establishing a set of services with uh, optional programs that address local needs. So uh, AAA thought it would be um, a collaborative effort that would identify the programs and services that would be available across all AAAs. Um, and communities. There'd be consistent quality standards, um, but then additionally, the AAAs would be empowered to tailor those offerings to meet the unique needs of their community. And then uh, developing outcome measures and monitoring performance. Um, so moving again, as I, I just briefly mentioned, or re related to data, move from output focused to outcome focused, um, which again would reflect the effectiveness and the impact of, um, of agencies and their programs for, uh, for California. And uh, we heard a lot about the specific measures or ideas for areas of focus for, for these outcomes, um, but just to name a few that came up often, um, consumer satisfaction uh, and impact, quality of life, um, as well as health outcomes or even just public awareness. And now to move to the, to the next trait, be equitable and sustainable. So being a network that has the, the resources necessary to, to meet the growing and changing needs of Californians, um, having, re, having resources managed and allocated in a manner that is equitable and reach for, for all consumers. And uh, there were a lot of um, ideas you can see here for, for this trait. Um, and just to focus on, on a few of those here, so to invest in person-centered models first. Uh, so the opportunity to have an integrated service delivery model that takes a holistic approach. Uh, uh, more specific ideas would be a standardized intake and assessment process to, de to determine eligibility and need. Having a universal gateway program and user-friendly technology, um, again, serving as entry points to coordinate a single delivery of services. 
uh, to deliver programs and services that are culturally competent. Uh, it was felt that additional resources and training would help to ensure that service delivery is sensitive to the needs and desires of diverse consumers. Uh, AAA has felt the policies and funding channels should be evaluated, uh, looking for ways to dedicate more funding for administrative functions and to better support perhaps rural AAAs. It was also felt to be important to think beyond short-term one-time funding opportunities and to focus more on reliable ongoing sources, such as grants from other state agencies and federal entities, uh, looking at community foundations, uh, the Cal-AIM Medi-Cal contract opportunities, and uh, AAA's felt that CDA could play a role in providing guidance in this area and, again, having some uh, consistency across the state. Uh, they also want to advocate for a larger state level allocation to the AAAs, uh, particularly in the form of a proactive proposal to expand the budget of the California Aging Network to maintain services and expand programs and services. And then uh, AAAs recognized there are some restrictions with how funding pools can be used, uh, which is driven by federal guidance and, and restrictions there, but still saw an opportunity that uh, at the state level uh, could create more flexible long-term funding streams that would, that would complement this and looking for opportunities there. And then lastly, strengthening the workforce. Uh, so prioritizing and building effective leadership through training, uh, perhaps mentorship opportunities, plus uh, continued education and professional development for all staff within the network. For the next trait, be responsive and proactive. So a network with the, the capacity to understand and anticipate the changing needs of the community uh, to find solutions that address them equitably and creatively. Uh, so some of the ideas that we heard here, some of the actions. Uh, so first, embracing being the local aging experts. Uh, AAA is, of course, experiencing experience challenges with capacities and practices, uh, but they still felt they are the local experts in aging and felt the need to further embrace and demonstrate that role. Uh, they they uh, felt giving more attention to mental, behavior, behavioral, and cognitive health was important. So uh, playing a role in raising awareness and building understanding within the network and, and beyond, um, but also to possibly develop supportive services or at least more formally refer to specialized services already available. And the next idea, the next action really similar uh, was around older adult homelessness, uh, which we heard as a trend that, that certainly emerged um, in determining their, their role uh, in addressing that. Um, so again, similar exploring ways in which to become more integrated uh, make more referrals to existing services or systems, um, and even explore developing their own supportive programs to, to support this need, uh, such as a, a co-housing model. And then lastly, uh, for this trait, a desire to review all current programs for the potential to modernize and update to be better aligned with uh, the current needs and expectations of their consumers. Uh, and just to give a couple of specific examples that emerged here, um, modernizing and expanding nutrition services to offer more flexible options, removing the need for uh, the socialization requirements that may deter some from utilizing those services. Um, another was to expand evidence-based health promotion programs across the state for equitable access improving transportation, uh, such as through statewide public-private partnerships that would ensure older adults have access to essential services to remain independent. And then that takes us to our, our last trait, so be age-friendly. Uh, so a network that works to understand, combat, and prevent the negative stereotypes that are associated with aging, while also promoting age-friendly practices, policies, and understanding, um, again, with their partners and even more broadly. So a few ideas here. Uh, many felt that CDA and the AAAs should be the ones to take the lead in combating negative stigmas associated with aging and disability. Uh, so again, raising awareness, promoting help-seeking and proactive behaviors, and fostering a culture that, that values older adults and aging. Uh, many had the ideas around fostering intergenerational connections across programs. Um, so this was seen as an opportunity. Uh, specific ideas for program programming that came about included intergenerational housing programs, technology education programs and volunteer programs that brought the two generations together. Uh, and some even raised potential for inco incorporating an incentive for this, uh, such as a, a property tax credit. 
And then lastly, advocating for policy changes at the state and federal levels. Uh, AAA has felt that there should be a greater push to educate and regularly brief uh, elected officials and, and policymakers on aging and aging services, including the challenges faced by older adults, sharing that. AAA is also like the idea of putting more focus on working with and partnering with other organizations that are focused on advocating for older adults, such as uh, AARP was an example that was raised. So that takes us to our last trait, and again, highlighting some of, just some of the actions um, and ideas that we heard from the, the AAA perspective. Uh, just in summary, I would say AAA has had a lot of positivity, a lot of ideas for the future network. Um, they felt the network should be more known, uh, but more equipped for that, better tools, infrastructure, and more. So that concludes, again, our highlights, uh, our presentation. And so at this time, I will, uh, I'll turn it over to Connie to moderate uh, the question and answer session. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Erin. Um, so now we are going to go into our question and answer session. Um, so if you'd like to answer a, or uh, sorry, not answer, if you'd like to ask a question live, please feel free to click on the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen and we will unmute your microphone so you can ask your question live. Um, so we'll just wait a couple minutes as folks may be tapping on the raise hand icon. Uh, we'll go over to the Q&A chat and take a look at what questions that we may have in queue right now. And a lot of them look like housekeeping questions. Um, there is one asking about where they would be able to find the slide presentation. And all of this will be available on CDA's website. If you go to our homepage, you will see under highlights, there is a link that says CA 2030, and you can click on there and the presentation and today's video will be available um, on that page. Um, there was also a question about uh, who had said specific quotes, um, but these quotes I believe are anonymous in the presentation. It's a collective, uh, effort, I guess, amongst the AAA network. So um, the uh, quote, I guess the person that made the quote is not uh, going to be um, identified. Okay, let's go over to the participants. Let's see if there's any hands raised. I see Tatiana. We're going to unmute your microphone and you can ask your question live. the many uh, areas I, I work with high cap. Um, throughout this presentation, I have heard the workforce need and, and adaptation and so forth. Has the study or will the study look at the unique um, experiences and types of personalities that the various generations have come forth with because employers are having a hard time with I, I, either uh, keeping employees or adapting or having the employees adapting to the culture or the needs of the particular agency for whom they are working. So for example, there has been a lot of talk in my circle is that for example, the Gen Zs are not, are not loyal to their employers. They're only looking for the money. So I'm just putting in another layer of consideration and, and how to adapt potential uh, employees and how to deal with that uh, those different generations of employees. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Okay, let's see. We have another hand raised. Um, Gloria Sanchez, we're going to unmute your microphone. And if you'd like to ask your question live. Gloria, can you hear us? Okay, we'll come back to Gloria in a few minutes. And Am see I on? You. Oh, yep, you are on. Okay, my question was regarding the survey. If it is now being uh, sent out by our local AAAs to 
the different senior centers for that to be going out to our seniors. And the other question I had was, did the committee ever consider a three digit uh, number very similar to our uh, 411 or our 211 so that they can, uh, our seniors can remember a three digit instead of remembering the long phone number. Hmm. Thank you for those questions. Nak Nakia, do you mind jumping in to talk about the survey really quick? Yes, thank you, Connie. Good morning, uh, everyone, and good morning, Gloria. Regarding the question about the Caseo survey, um, right now it has started to go out to various regions um, where several of our AAAs are located. In regards to the AAAs, our um, individuals being able to take the survey to local senior centers and administer that, that will not be able to happen until we are at the portion of open participation. And um, according to our timeline regarding open participation of the survey, that is expected in or around August 14th. And so at that time, um, those who have the survey will have the opportunity if they choose to, meaning such as our AAAs and AAA directors to take the survey to senior centers, et cetera, to um, promote that open participation in the survey. We have been notified that some of the AAAs do intend to do exactly that. So again, that will come during the open participation stage of the survey. Right now it's at the random sampling distribution portion of the survey. Thank you. Thank you, Nikia. And also thank you, Gloria, for that feedback on, on the number. It's definitely noted. Um, let's see, let's go. So again, if you want to ask a question live, all you have to do is click on your raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, so feel free to ask any questions pertaining to anything that has been presented today. Um, going over to the Q&A for questions that have been submitted. Looks like there's still some housekeeping questions. The presentation will be made available again. Um, you'll find the link on our homepage um, under highlights. It'll be under a CA 2030 link. Honey, uh, going that, uh, just real quickly, because one of the questions is also about the report that I mentioned, which will also be available with the presentation. I think the, the question is it's not there yet, but it will be the full interview synthesis report will be available on the website too. Okay. Thank you, Laurie. Okay, let's go to Diane Lawrence. We'll unmute your microphone. Good morning. This was, this was a wonderful presentation. My uh, question dovetails with Gloria's. What's the publicity around the survey? Um, you know, maybe I missed something, but I haven't heard that much about it. And I've you know, been participating in a lot of this. So I'm just curious so that um, we can make sure that we get as broad a cross section of representation as we can. I think it's a great idea. I can't wait to fill it out. Um, so I just hope, I, I just wanna know, so I can let my um, advisory council know that it's coming to be on the lookout and to talk to their constituencies about it. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Regarding the survey, we've done several um, pushes towards advertisement or our promotion of the survey um, in every presentation that CDA has done um, throughout the past couple, several months. We've uh, we've made a, a effort to promote the survey, um, keeping in mind that again, the initial portion of the survey will be random participation. And so with the random sampling of participation, it has gone out and will continue to go out to our various AAA regions. Um, the vendor that we're working with for the survey, POCO, that is the name of the vendor, they have done regular meetings with all of our AAAs. Um, they do check-in meetings as well as just meetings indicating timelines, et cetera. And so a lot of the, the meetings have been directly with our AAAs just to advise them that within their regions, the surveys will be going out. Additionally, when it comes to the open participation, we have also done newsletters, um, submissions with related to CDA. We've also done other efforts in regards to, like I said, um, presentations and really getting the word out that way. Additionally, um, 
I've presented at the um, CALA Association. And so during that presentation, the survey was also promoted um, for participation. But again, that's related to the open participation portion of it. The random sampling is where we're going, where we're at now, the, the portion of the survey and the promotion. So a lot of that has been done directly with our AAAs since it will be going out in their regions. Thank you. Yeah, and this is uh, Mark. I'm the uh, Chief Deputy Director for the department. And a key remind me, the open participation that starts August 14th, is that right? That's correct, in or around August 14th. So if you have any suggestions about additional outreach, um, as Nikki has said, we have been working with closely with our AAA partners on uh, marketing and outreach locally of the survey. But if you have any additional ideas you'd like to share with us, we would uh, be more than happy to hear those. So um, either drop in the Q&A um, portion, or I think that we've got contact information uh, where you can email us as well. I'll check back with my triple with the staff. Great. And I may just have missed it in so many of the presentations, but I think it's a great idea. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Once again, if you'd like to ask a question, you can click on the raise hand icon at the bottom of the screen and we'll unmute you. Um, going through the Q&A, it looks like um, there's quite a few questions asking about if there's recommendations on specific topics. And um, I was thinking, Lori, maybe um, if you could uh, walk us through again on um, in terms of the three-part webinar series and what we're covering and then how, I don't think we're at the stage of the recommendations yet. So if you can yeah. walk everyone through that process again. Yeah, I certainly will. Um, and, and in response to one of the questions about um, ideas or recommendations, I will say that I wouldn't recommend to read the full interview synthesis because there's a lot of ideas that were given. And there were also examples. Um, I think we inventoried different examples from AAAs that were responding to, for example, um, the housing the housing issues. So that that's one. Again, ideas. Um, we we have a few more pieces of research, the promising practices to finish up. We want to incorporate the consumer, consumer assessment data. Um, we're working on some quantitative data around the network profile. And then all of that, including the, the previous interview synthesis and this synthesis. And then by the way, we've been working with the CDA team on a weekly basis <laughs> and the steering committee on a monthly basis. So all of that, data gets kind of brought together. And that's when we start looking at um, where the different themes across mm. multiple research sources, and that gets compiled into what are the different possibilities or scenarios. And then we move into recommendations that, that will be a result of all of this research and discovery uh, towards the end of the year. So be on the lookout for one more webinar around the promising practices, which would close the research and discovery phase. Um, then we move into you know, working with all of the data, decision-making and prioritizing. We'll likely have another webinar in the fall, let you know how we're doing. And then at the end of the year will be the, the set of recommendations in those six focus areas that Susan highlighted earlier. Connie, does that get, get to the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Laurie. Okay, let's go over to Will Tip now. We're going to unmute you, and if you'd like to ask your question. Thank you. Good morning. Just want to offer a commentary here on the differences between agencies on aging across the state. And you know, to me, it's sort of like saying, um, how come the California Department of Education doesn't have the same standards across all colleges in California? How come USC isn't the same as Fresno State or Sac City College? And the reason, of course, is that USC has uh, loads and loads of private dollars coming in, and a city college does not have that. The same dynamic is true with agencies on aging in a place like San Diego, where you have the, the Older Americans Act money coming in is, is the minority of money 
that that AAA is using to provide all kinds of programs and services. So I think the discussion should not be, you know, how can we all look like the San Diego AAA or how could all colleges look like USC because that's not realistic, it's not appropriate. Um, that uh, That's important, I think, for um, collaborative consultant consulting to understand is, is how much private money that's beyond the scope of the Department of Aging tips the scales and, and um, makes some AAAs look far bigger and more successful and more impactful than others. Thank you for that comment and feedback, Will. Okay, let's see here. Now, if anyone has a question, um, all you have to do is click on the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Going through the chat, um, I'm not seeing any other questions that are coming. So we'll just give it another quick minute. If anybody wants to ask a question live, I can click on the raise hand icon at the bottom. Um, or you can put your question into the Q&A section as well. Thank you, Nelson, for dropping that link in. Um, there's a direct link to the CA 2030 page uh, that links off of our highlights on the CDA page. And that's the page where you will find all the information of the past webinar. And also today's webinar uh, will also be posted shortly on that page, both the presentation and the video. Okay, seeing that there are no additional questions uh, to be asked live uh, or in the Q&A, um, we'll now go to the closing. And let's see, Lori, would you like to close us off? Yeah, thanks, Connie. And thank you, everybody, um, for the questions and the input. Um, very much appreciated. And I, I, I believe I've already mentioned this, but I'll just spotlight it one more time that the final webinar in this series, which closes out, again, the research and discovery phase of the project is Thursday, August 24th from 12 to 115. It's on promising practices. Uh, we have been interviewing different states. We've been researching different states and we got pretty specific around those six focus areas. So hopefully you will be able to join us in August for the promising practices webinar. And in the meantime, if you have other questions that come up, if once you take a look at the presentations and the reports and so on, don't please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we love to engage in the conversation about this project. So thanks everyone and have a great week ahead. Susan, did you wanna say anything? Um, I wanted to say thank you to our collaborative consulting team. And then in the chat, I just, I, I really wanna underscore, um, this is quite a feat that every single area agency on aging contributed equally to this work, and we have 100% participation. Uh, so thank you, every one of you at all levels of your organization um, that helped produce what we just shared at a high level with you, and you'll be able to see much greater detail in the months ahead as we, we post all of this to our website. So thank you to our AAA partners and to Collaborative Consulting and to the CDA team, as you heard, we've been meeting weekly on this um, and it's a high, high priority for our executive team and staff. So thank you to the CDA team as well. Everybody have a great week.